Hi, welcome to Ask GMBM, where we're going to attempt to answer your questions. So if you've got any, use the hashtag Ask GMBM in any video comment, and we'll pick them up and we'll try and answer them. Yeah, and we have got some bangers to kick off with, haven't we? Starts with quite a controversial, actually. Kevin yes. Smith says, uh, well, it's about storage boxes and bike frames. Are they useful or are they a gimmick? Mm. He actually says he's got one. I've got a 2023 Trek Slash Scott storage compartment. It, he says it's a total gimmick. I can't fit a multi-tool with a chain brake on it, two tie leaves and a tire plug kit and the bag for the compartment. This will <sighs> not fit at all. Heck, a cliff bar is difficult to get in, right? Cliff bars aren't that big, no, to be fair. No. I guess my question is, are all these compartments different sizes and are they actually useful or are they a gimmick? Rich? Great question. Opinion on storage. I think useful on certain types of bikes. What type of bikes? Mm, enduro -y kind of trail all day type bikes. Daniel bikes? No. No. Dirt jump bikes? <laughs> no. no. XC bikes? But it's surely something you're going to ride for a day where you could get out and about and you're going to need some spares, and you don't have to take a saddle bag anymore. Exactly. I mean, so, I've got frames like my Canyon Spectral where you've got an extra sort of bottle cage mount space thing that oh, comes with a really nice little bag. So yes. It's, it's external. It's not very big either, but it's nice. But yeah. internal means you can't see it. It's quite neat. 100%. Uh, I don't know how big an, the compartment is on a slash, but on the Rallon, you have like a tall sleeve which you'd pop the bits into. Um, what is in your sleeve? Uh, a couple of tire levers, some zip ties, CO2 canister, That's and that doesn't take up the whole space. Okay. I've actually forgotten about bits of clothes, like an old gilet in there in the past, and it's got rather stinky. Wow. So it's... I think it's useful. Oh, you kind of, I can see why you might think it's gimmick, and it could be, I suppose. If it's not useful, it's gimmick. It depends how much... I mean, he sounds like he's trying to put a lot in there. But you've got... I guess if you don't have them, you've got a void in the frame that's now become useful for a lot of riders, so you might as well have it if it's, you know, if it's a choice. But... So what are we saying, Neil? I'm saying no gimmick. I mean, I think I'm agreeing. Oh, sorry. Okay. Kevin Smith, Kevin. sorry about that. Next question. Could you make a, bit, a video about how to drop into a half pipe like Neil did? Please. A, I'm well, desperate to know the secret. Proper half pipe in a skate park. You kind of, yeah, there's a coping. So if you draw it, you know, there's your half pipe. Top of it, there's a big metal, almost like a scaffolding pole that goes mm. on top. So you've got to get over that. If you ride into it, you can front wheel slide. But what you want to do is ride along the deck at an angle. So you're, you're going at, at basically at 90 degrees, and then you turn in more to like 45. And then you, as you drop in, you have to pick the front wheel up. Obviously, you're trying to match. If it's a vert ramp, it's super Oof. steep. You've got to get in early. Uh, and if you go in straight at the coping, oh, oh my days, you're, you're dead. You know, oh. basically, the angle may, means that. you have to drop in quite a steep yeah. almost, but you have got to drop in steep. So front wheel, then back wheel. I've done this on drop off. Sometimes on a mountain bike trail, you want to get in to the, the dirt as soon as you can. So you basically, you kind of let the front wheel drop off, and then you pick the back wheel up. Basically like a bunny hop where you forget the front wheel exists and you just pick the back wheel up to get it in as well. But it's pretty committed. Um, Bigger the quarter pipe, scarier it is, right? Oh man, it is scary. Yeah. Uh, on a BMX as well, you've got more space. On a mountain bike dropping into a vert ramp, your back wheel is close to your bum. Scary. I've never so, dropped into a vert on a yeah. mountain bike. No way. No, could we make a video? Well, no need. Neil's just told you how to do it. Yeah. Go start small, obviously. Yeah, right. Next up, this is from AMVC. Full face helmets are a requirement on the trail parks I want to ride this summer. Is there any good solutions for those of us who have to wear glasses? Now, I'm not a glasses wearer, so this is... I'm not either, but there's, there are options. Obviously, a lot of people that I know will wear contact lenses and goggles over top. Obviously, with contacts, you don't want to get any dirt in your eyes. It really messes them up. However, there are things called over-the-glass goggles. Actually, they're, they're most of the acronyms called OTG goggles. Um, Smith don't make them for bikes that I can find. I'm sure they used to for motocross. But they, they do for anymore. snow, I think. For snow, they do. Uh, other brands, Oakley and 100%, do make them for bikes. However, mm. in my research, it sounds like they're not so easy to get on and off. But you you found a workaround, right? Well, with those, you have to put your glasses on your face first uh, and then okay. goggles, like trying to fit the goggles over the arms and glasses. Yeah. However, it sounds like the best option are these things called RX inserts, which are nylon mm. inserts that are kind of universal. They're kind of funny shaped things that will, you get your prescription lenses go in them and then they kind of clip into the goggle frame so inside the lens they go in oh, so it's like a Morpheus style go yeah glass. sit inside but then they stay inside the goggle so you, you don't okay. have to worry about two things then hopefully that helps um, yeah I've seen riders I've seen riders using full face helmets with glasses but obviously your glasses are pretty quite expensive so yeah. I mean, if you crash they can come that could off. be quite uncomfortable I should imagine yeah 
Who knows? So, uh, right. Is it ever proper... Uh, sorry, this is from Wheels and Stuff. Is it ever proper to put a foot down while cornering? Well, ask Sam Hill and you might have a different answer, but... Yeah, I mean, I raced down for years on, on mm. flat pedals, and funnily enough, I used to try and keep my feet completely planted. However, you have the options to dab your foot pretty yeah, quick. 100%. I would say, is it ever proper to put it for down? I mean, it's not unproper, but I would say not many people plan like a foot plan on, in a turn. You shouldn't be, let's put it that way. Hanging a foot's fine. Obviously, it's there to dab should you need it, and I'm, you know, I've done, I don't mind a dab. Don't mind no, that. Don't mind a dab. <laughs> But to actually do it yeah. on purpose, I wouldn't. I would never no, plan I'd, to. I'd agree. I think yeah, it's there. Like maybe from a balancing point of view. Yeah, I wouldn't stress. Like do it. It's fine. Yeah. And we saw a lot of people at the weekend actually in the Daniel uh, World Champs, not World Champs, World, World Cup. Cup, jumping. You see Bernard Kerr hanging a foot. Yeah. Doing the last legs, jump, hanging a foot off. Swag. Because he didn't have to pedal out the turn. The, the finish line was right there. That's why a lot of riders keep their feet on because it, it takes off, you know, not half a second, but a little bit to get your foot back on and go in. that faff of maybe if you are yeah. clipping in as well. Yeah. So, saw a few riders here, The answer is... Maybe. <laughs> uh, I hope that's helped. Uh, next question from Rami Rock. Mr. Uh, if anyone knows the answer, I've just bought a new Commissar Meta Hardtail and the new models are mixed wheel size. Whilst I've ridden and, ridden and enjoyed the setup for about three months, I really would like to maintain the geometry as possible, but change it to a full 27.5, so swap the front to 27.5. What fork size should I get? 160 or 170 mil? At the moment, that bike comes the 150 and okay. the 29er. So that bike is a hardtail. So the first thing you want to do is find the axle to crown height of the fork, which I've done for the model you've got with the Rock Shocks 35 silver R fork, 150 mil of travel. That measurement is 561 millimeters but also putting on the smaller wheel will drop the front end by another 20 millimeters approximately so then you want to try and get as similar as possible to get the same angle front end height of the bike even with the smaller front wheel so having a longer travel uh, fork and hardtail will drop the front end in a lot as you go deep into travel as well so bear that in mind so the 27.5 version of the same 35 silver fork has an axle to crown of 5.52 in a 160 mil travel fork. You can't get a 170 mil version, so that would drop the front end a lot. 180 mil domain, unsagged, will get you most of the way to recovering the lost front end height uh, with the drop in wheel size. Uh, they're about 60 mil longer than a standard fork. But the dynamic geometry of that bike as you go into travel will make it feel uh, weird to ride. Probably the best option would be 170 mil domain, put some volume spaces in them and run them a little firmer to try and keep it riding higher in the travel. And just accept that you'll have a slightly steepened head angle and lower the BB height a little bit. Obviously I didn't check other manufacturers, so there's other people like Fox, uh, Manitou, Suntour, you could check those as well. Actually, Blake uh, did race EWS on his hardtail, on his new proof scout with a 170 mil travel fork, so it's not completely out of the realms of possibility. Uh, it can work. Some of these sort of longer slack hardtails are made for longer travel forks, uh, but completely up to you on how you want that bike to feel. Good question, though. Nice informative answer there, Neil. Well, thank you very much. The uh, aim to inform. Get involved in the comments down below, or like I said, just use the hashtag AskGMN on any video that you watch, and uh, we'll find it. And we'll obviously try and answer the best of the questions and uh, get back to you. Yeah, right. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, we'll see yeah. you later. See ya.